Hello, welcome to this channel. My name is Gareth Pearson and if you're new here, please click on the like, subscribe and notification button. Cheers. In today's lesson, we're going to be going over White Heat by Merle Travis and this is on his Travis Picking album. And as always, if you want to follow along with the sheet music and tablature, there's a link in the description section below. I'm going to perform this and then break it down into three sections. So here we go. This is White Heat by Merle Travis. One, two, three. <laughs> Okie dokie, that is white heat. Now let's address the key information. There's a capo on the second fret. I'm in standard tuning and I have a thumb pick on my right thumb to get all that boom chick sounds. Even though we're technically in the key of B major, I'm gonna be addressing it as if we're in A major because I'm playing out of A major shapes and all that. So that's the key information. Let's have a look at part one. Okay, let's begin to tackle this song. It's basically a, a classic Travis Picking song, being from the album Travis Picking. I'd like to think we're incorporating that technique. So most of the song I'm going to be playing with a thumb and index finger. And it's a three chord song, a one, four, five in A. So we've got an A, D, an E. But being a classic Miller Travis song, some of these shapes aren't your classic like standard guitar shapes and we're going to be breaking a couple of rules and also i kind of took this song from the travis picking album how he plays it but i did a little bit of my own thing on there as well so it's not completely authentic but i try my best and work around it so i'll show you the the things that i come up with as we go along so having said that we're starting off like this Okay, so let's just break that down first. So what's interesting is I'm creating this sound. Just that opening statement there. I'm smacking the guitar and my thumb is coming over the top of the neck and sliding from the low E, say first fret, to the fifth fret. So I'm grabbing that A. And then I'm coming down on that A shape. And the, how I play that A shape, the ring finger is covering two strings, the A string and the D string. My thumb is on the low E string. So there's three strings there. My middle finger is on the sixth fret G string. And then my index finger is covering the B and the E on the fifth fret. Okay, then my pinky finger gets that that sixth note there okay so that's a classic Mill Travis chord and then I go of 
course the thumb is being choked like that and my index finger is playing those stabs um that's worth practicing in itself that's a cool technique okay and obviously you're stabbing that with your index finger so keep practicing that until you got the feel and then let's look at the next shape here i'm playing this like d7 chord but i'm pretty sure mill travis has his thumb over the top here but uh, i kind of like having the low e string ringing which makes it like a d9 um, at least the nine is on the bass there okay so it's got this d shape and the high e string there and that low e makes it a nine so that'll be the next chord i'm playing but i do like that low e string there so that's why i play it like that okay and then i grab the a there again then i play an e9 with my middle finger covering the seventh fret e string and a string low e string and a string my first finger my index finger covers the sixth fret d string and then my ring finger covers the seventh fret g b and high e string then i play this d7 shape and that's covered the low e and a string with my thumb my middle finger is covering the d string on the seventh fret and then my ring finger covers the G and B string on the seventh fret. And then my high E string is on the eighth fret with my pinky. It's quite a fistful there, but you can get it. So we go from E9 to D and then back to this A shape. So let's play that one more time. As you can see i'm bending up on that eighth fret high e string there okay so i play that twice round and then i get to this shape okay so that's utilizing this a shape with my ring finger on the seventh fret d and my middle finger on the G, G string sixth fret and I'm using these open B and E and then just targeting these melody notes okay my thumb gets a little bit more articulate here like a Chet Atkins thumb then I play that D7 with a low E and then back into the theme okay so that kind of theme towards the end is going to be reoccurring throughout the song and then the last time round on these kind of shapes here I'm doing this So as I'm leaving all those notes ringing on, utilizing that open E as well, my middle fingers go in from the sixth fret G string to the fifth fret G string, making it a major to a minor. Then I get this D, and that's being played by holding on to that chord, and then my index finger comes and covers the low E and A string. into the theme again and you'll also
also see me do these like flick and skips. <laughs> That's a classic Mill Travis technique right there. And then we get to this fist chord shape here. All right, so that's just a standard A to an A flat, with the A on the bass. And then we get to this D7. That's the thumb on the low E with my ring finger on the third fret A string, pinky finger on the fourth fret D string, middle finger on the second fret G string, and index on the first fret B string. Then I have the open E. So I pick that with the Travis picking. I'm pulling off there from the first fret B string to an open B. Okay, and then I slide back in and play the rest of the theme. Same thing. Then I play this really cool pull off Chet Atkins lick. Check this out. So there's a couple of things overlapping here. We got this. Okay, so we're going five, three, zero to a five on the B string, three, zero on the high E string. So that's a cool move just to practice at first. Okay, then we have this five, three, and then we have the four on the G string. And then we're pulling off three zero on the B. So. So it's good to just practice them to get the muscles working there. Okay, then we get to four, two, zero, and then four, and then two zero on G. So. So just practice that. Okay, so that's the first lick. Then I get into banjo rolls with this D7 here. Okay. Then I get to A. Okay, that's an A6. Then I get to E7, but then that's when I go back into bum check. And then back into A. Okay, so let me play that slowly. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's that. Okay, let's have a look at the bass line solo now. We're basically just going to be working again through A, D and E and muting the, the bass line with our thumb. And we're pretty much only using our thumb right now. So we're gonna emphasize it here. Okay, that's A, then we get D. Back to A. Then E. Then A, E, A. Okay, then the second time round, we got this. D. Then A here. E. A, E, A. So let me play that slowly for you. One, two, three, four.
and then we get back into okay so we'll play that now going into the next section but it's we're basically playing the theme that we already played so nothing to, new to learn here now so the very last time round we're basically playing the same theme but we're gonna just emphasize the minor third there we're gonna get our pinky finger on the eighth fret high E string and just bend it up as an extra phrase so here we go we're gonna go and that's it pretty much it we get back into the D, A, and then we slide into the uh, A on the above the 12th fret here. Okay, so uh, I don't technically know how to explain that besides just get there. I don't know how many strums or where we're at because I'm not a mathematician. But uh, it's a very Les Pauly kind of thing. Just feel it, get there. Okay. So let me play that last time slowly for you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Well, there we go guys that's how i play white heat thanks again for joining me on this guitar lesson and as always please like comment subscribe and hit the notification button where you'll be notified on my future videos i'm posting thanks again and god bless you all see you on the next one